This is code.org, and we're in the airlines to Java file. Write the has duplicates method to return true if duplicate elements in the years found array, if there are. Print the result of call dupli uh, call to has duplicates method on the my airlines object to check the array for duplicates. Okay. Print the result of a call for has duplicates. Interesting. So that sounds like they want us to print it directly, which I'm not sure how I feel about. Um, I'm going to go for, well, let's check out what we got here. So we have an airline class. We have a file reader. We have text, which is all the names of airlines. We create a file reader object. In that object, we pass the name of the class, cool, which creates a file file object and a scanner object, allowing us to read through the data. We use the get string method to get 138 names, which is every name I assume. Yep, every string in this file. And we assign it to an airlines array. We then switch the file to years founded. And yep, these are all years. Uh, and my file class is now focused or pointed at years founded. We then create an array of years, also 134 long. At this point, we instantiate a my airplanes object and we use the airlines constructor or my airlines constructor to pass it the airlines string array and the years int array, which will mean right here that the instant variables, these top ones, this is referencing the class. So this class's variable airlines array, airlines name would now be equal to whatever value this is the local value of airline names this parameter or the argument would be represented by the variable name airline names and so the class-wide variable is equal to this local one same with the years founded and the local ones are these values that we passed it from the files so they need us to check for dupes all right uh do they want us both method on the my airlines i to check the array for duplicates what array transverse the year found oh okay there are duplicate values return the result all right, so first we know we must go through the array. Hmm. And we're looking for duplicate values. So it is tempting because I know I need to go through the entire array to do something like this for uh, and do an enhanced loop. And it would technically work. Uh, string, oh no, it would be an int. Int uh, year, right? Of, and then what did we, oh, years founded is the array years founded boom boom now this is tempting and then we can loop through each value i wouldn't do this this would work but i wouldn't do it i'm gonna go a traditional route and do something like this and so i need to go through all of the items and compare them to all of the other items so i'm gonna first say uh int hmm, what should i call this i'm gonna call it first right this is the first index this is what is looking so first is going to be equal to zero and then first is going to need to be less than and i'm going to change this in a moment but years founded dot length and then first is going to go up by one each time so first is going to be equal to first plus one and like i always say the fancy way to say go up by one each time is plus plus all right so now right now we can get through our numbers array just by doing you know And that's just going to give us a ton of info. Oh, it's not because I'm not using it yet. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I misspelled it. That's fun. Okay, but also I need to do this. And let me double check one other thing. Uh, notice this says, oh, good. They're already returning. Cool. Yep. So I'm printing all the numbers. That works fine. I'm going through each index and I'm printing them. Now, I need to be comparing them, though. And this is where it gets tricky. I'm going to need a loop within a loop because I need to look at the next number in my array to be able to compare them. So I'm going to kill this. Well, maybe not yet. Mm, no, I will. Okay. So I'm going to do another loop for int second. And second is going to be equal to zero, which is a bad idea. And I'll fix in a second. Second is going to be less than years bounded dot length. And second is going to go up by one each time. Plus plus. Now, a few things here. This is a bad idea because I'm looping through the entire array both times, which would be problematic. 
Why is that problematic? Well, because when this is at index zero, this will be at index zero, and it's instantly going to find a duplicate because it's looking at the same value. We need to make sure that this never does that. It can never look at the same value. So instead of that, I'm going to start it at first, right? But not first. So whatever index first is currently at, I'm going to go one past it plus one. That way, I always know this is one step beyond and it will never look at the same value. Now, you might think, but wait a minute, if I have an array of, you know, um, one, two, three, four, five, like this, and what if I had, you know, both of these were two? Well, when I get to here, I don't want it. When I get to here, first will be two, second would be four. It's not going to find the dupes. Well, that's not true because first had to first go through this. So it would have found it already, which is why we are only going to compare from the first index, wherever that is, here, 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 to the last, uh, to one plus it, so one beyond it. That's what we're going to need to do. Now, what's going to happen if we find a duplicate? You just found it at length. Something else I hate, guys, though, is if that's what we're doing, we really shouldn't go to the end of the array. Because why check the very last index? It won't fail, but it bothers me a lot. Why check this? Why when first is equal to index 4, which is value 5 right here, first is equal to index 4, why let it run down here and say, okay, well, second plus 1 is index 5, which doesn't exist, so 5 would be less than the length of this array right here. So this for loop doesn't run. This for loop then goes up by 1, and it's all done. No reason to do that. It's not going to run anyways, but just bad form, I would say. Minus 1. All right, now how do we find a duplicate? Well, that should be pretty straightforward. I need to say, um, well, I need a Boolean, right? Because we're going to return a true false. And I'm going to say found dupe is equal to false, right? And then right here, I can do, because if, how do I know if I found a dupe? If, so if years founded first equals equals is identical to years founded second, found dupe would be equal to true. And then instead of returning false down here, I should return found dupe. What did I mess up? Oh, I can't spell second either. Good thing I'm not a teacher or something. <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> oh, and it's not going to print anything. Does it want it to? Yeah, so it wants us to print out this result. Um, I could, of course, go Boolean dupes or something like this, and then do something. You can write whatever there. I'm just being fancy. Found duplicate years, which is true. So I could also just do it this way, of course, and not have it saved to a variable. Totally up to you. The other thing I want to point out, guys, is I don't like this. This works. This is correct. Here's why I don't like it. Well, there's a few reasons. One, I could output the year. That would be kind of a cool addition, is to actually give it the year. But that's fine. We can do a Boolean. What I don't like is that once this is true, I should be done with this, right? There's no reason if the second value is a duplicate in our years founded list, which I wonder where the dupe is. Uh, I see this one once. Next. Yeah, so that at least is there twice. Uh, if we found a duplicate, we're done. We need to return true. There's no reason to keep going through. We already know it's not fine. It's not false. So if you want, and we haven't done this as much, you can return within a method, return here, return true. Now this is fancy. It's not required. It's probably not even needed for what we were doing, but I like it because it means we're not going to continue to loop through. The second we find a duplicate, we're done running this. And if we return true here, the whole method's done. It doesn't keep looping through that data unnecessarily because we've already fulfilled our objective, all right? And then down here, we would just return false because if it got there, it's false. Again, that is not necessary. It's a bit more advanced, but anyways, onward.